I had uh, told you last time that I was going to talk about the time and how the detective had destroyed the tape uh, on the last uh, filming. And the time is here, the 23, uh, 30, and you'll see that it's three times, and it also says no funds when you, when you come over. It says no funds. And so that's, that's when the people were actually robbed. So that shows that and proves that it was 1133. Okay, and then I will also show you uh, as we go in, into it. I'm going to get the next page. <clears throat> Everything's going to be written too. When you check out uh, my support page, I will have all these documents on there. So you could also visually see them for yourself. So what I wanted to say is the time pretty accurate when you access your ATM machines? You know, aren't the cameras always working at the banks? You know, or the ATMs? That's a question uh, that that I ask when I look at this because it says I asked, was there a video machine first of all? You know. Was there video available? And she indicated that the video was non-operative and that they had been having difficulties with that machine. I also asked her, was there any way she could possibly say, once this printout comes out, was there anything wrong with the times? Now, the reason why the detective was asking that was because it would be to his convenience and the prosecution's convenience that if the time is inaccurate then that would show that that um, the time wouldn't prove our innocence and then the video is unoperative so conveniently um, that that also messes with the case and our you know in our defense here in the inside of the courtroom so I want to flip to the next page and show you how uh, let me see this is all there inside of it so, let's say, you asked her if there was a video machine at the ATM machine, a video, you know, if there was a video, you know, because it wouldn't show me or my friend, you know, a camera. Yes, sir. Was it operating on the night of December 15th? No, sir. It was inoperative. So, this is what he said in the courtroom. Then, I'm going to also show you on the next, come on. that in the store when we were inside of the Texaco people could say oh well he wasn't he wasn't in there you know because I was outside pumping gas but this page shows that I actually went inside to pay for what my friend had grabbed he had grabbed the food on the counter and it says right here you know that until Mr. Hedinger had paid for his item they both walked side by side out of the facility you know And then uh, for them to do what they did next, we asked for that tape that was inside of the Texaco station. So here's my lawyer asking for that for that tape. See, over and over. I'm sorry. Let me come back here to the last page. It says it's become. It's become distorted. The head portion of the individuals is unrecognizable at this time due to the extensive amount of watching the video over and over and over. Now this is what the detective did. And it's the tape that they used to use at the store anyway. And he said, yes, sir. Did they rewind over it and tape over it? Yes, sir. So you've kind of worn it out. Yes, sir. Now that's the tape. That proves my innocence. So the detective is admitting right here that they wore it out and they weren't able to use it as a time reference to prove my to prove my innocence. <clears throat> so this is the some of the supporting. It's the supporting. Uh, so here's the initial time, and then those are the supporting 
uh, documents that I was talking about to show that the detective had destroyed the tape. Also, I have straight from the internet is the uh, exoneration pages for this country, more or less inside of the United States. I'm going to bring those. And that's something that I'm going to have up on my support page as well. So it lists what I'm going to go into into the next video. All of the perjuries. All you just see, I only took eight uh, or to ten pages off of this list of exonerations here inside of the United States. So I, I actually pointed the arrow towards where it says perjury or false false misleading you know uh, uh, or false identification false accusation so it's all right there mistaken witness ID so I mainly pointed the arrow to the perjuries and these are all exonerations so I'm gonna I'm gonna go through the pages so you can see how many arrows there are you know just up and down if you could get a whole like the whole uh, yeah you can go up the page how many the perjuries there are I don't know if you can uh, you can back up on this. and then um, there's just it just goes on and on for for 10 10 pages and so it doesn't become redundant uh, there are actually 36 pages and I'm gonna have this link on my uh, support page so you can see how that perjury does exist in America and it runs rampant in America and um, you were probably saying well how come you haven't uh, shown you know got exonerated you know like California how people can get ex expungement in seven years uh, well North Carolina doesn't have expungement and then also how many people have money for a lawyer to go actually get the writ of habeas corpus. That's about $10,000 with a good lawyer. Then many of our people with not being able to afford that, they just kind of roll with the blows. Uh, just like someone who's been falsely accused, they take a plea instead of fighting it out. Because to fight it out, you it costs a lot of money. Then can you make the bail? It's usually your bail money goes toward that money that would at least help you fight a little bit towards uh, exoneration or, or, or having your, your char charges thrown out because you are innocent. And this is a crisis. This is something that's going on and it runs rampant in America. When I was behind the wild walls, this is what I saw. I saw so many people, they had to take a plea because they could just simply couldn't afford to defend themselves. Oh, I'll be up.